Sadiqa radiyallahu ta'ala anha states that when the angels were instructed to prostrate then at that time three there were three big forms of creation at that time one was the creation of made of light the creation made of fire and one the creation made of soil clay these were the three creatures you could say forms of creation and all three Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala addressed so except for so so this order this instruction wasn't just for the malaika angels, rather the jinnat were also included. The, the jinns, they were also included. Now, if we look the difference in the three, the three forms of creation, one is made of nur light and was close to Allah in the heavens, in the skies, clean, pure, reciting Allah's dhikr, doing Allah's dhikr, always obedient servants of Allah. And one is the creation made of fire, jinnat, and one is the creation made of clay soil. So if we see amongst all three how much difference there is between them in terms of their rank, their status, but, but, Allah Ta'ala to those who did the sajda prostration and to who they did the sajda the difference is that the creation made of light or fire should prostrate to the clay, the soil so the jinnat were included in this instruction now the order that the malaika was, were given for sajda prostration there are different uh, commentators who have spoken on this commented on this subject that the sajda, the prostration of malaika that Allah Ta'ala told the malaika to prostrate this was sajda sharia and it wasn't sajda, sajda sharia because in reality Allah Ta'ala is the only one who is worthy of prostration so then this must be something else that Allah Ta'ala to increase his respect and to show his superiority Allah Ta'ala ordered them to make the prostration. And also third, we can say that sajda wasn't to Adam, rather the prostration in reality, it was to Allah, but it was the symbol, like just like we do sajda to Baytullah. So Allah Ta'ala instructed them to do that action, although it's Allah's instruction, Allah's order. Anyway, if we look at it in any way, the one thing clearly we can determine it was Allah Ta'ala's hukam, Allah's order. In this we can also take the understanding that Adam alayhi salam he he had taught the malaika, instructed the malaika, gave them education, gave them the ilm. So this such that prostration was to be grateful and that is why they 
were told to prostrate because he had told them, he had favored them, explained the ilm to them, to the angels. Just like Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam stated that whoever is not grateful to a person for what he does it like a favor, he's not uh, grateful to Allah. This is a hadith in, uh, uh, narrated by Imam Ahmad bin Hanbal in Sahih Tirmidhi and Muslim Sharif. So this is a very important point that whoever teaching marifa, ilm, knowledge, teaching irfan, Allah's nearness, to gain Allah Ta'ala's nearness. So it is stated for appreciation and this is the honor, respect that came in their hearts, the dignity. So the respect. So from here we also realize that insan, the human being, it is lazim on him that if somebody teaches him, he should be grateful for the teaching. When that person's grateful, then Allah Ta'ala likes the action and he gives him more progression and more advancement. So the Holy Prophet ﷺ stated that if you are not grateful to a human being who has assisted you or helped you after giving you such ilm, knowledge, if you're not grateful, then then he is, he is ungrateful to Allah. In other words, he is a very big ungrateful person. This is the understanding we get clearly from this, is that whatever occurred, the angels are of light and the jinns of fire, and Allah elevated the creation clay and soil. And both were told, the fire and the light, to prostrate. And it doesn't matter how they were told to do it, how they did it, but it was Allah's order. So we're not worried about what they did, but rather what we're interested to know is that it was Allah's order. And this is the main point in this verse, the main learning, the biggest message for us. The, for us in reality is this, that sajda prostration was being made to us Adam alayhi salam. But the, the children were being trained to Adam, go and your children of spring should remember this prostration that was done to you. So what was that prostration? Which we are severely in need of today. First lesson that was given was this. To all three forms of creation. That maybe the question will rise that uh, there's one creation made of light, one of fire, one of clay, soil. So how can this be that... The, the, the creation made of clay, soil, those who are greater than him in terms of what they're made of, are being ordered to prostrate to human beings. And this is Allah Ta'ala wanted to eliminate this doubt. That it's my order that needs to be looked at. Doesn't matter what order I give, you have to embark on that order. You have to implement that order. That's it. To bring my order into reality is your duty, whether you understand it or not. Uh, no excuse, you don't look for a way out or a bypass, no. Rather the hukam, the order I give to you after going to this world, if you want to be successful in the world, then this is the biggest test for you. Subhanallah. Adam, the, 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 the son of Adam, the biggest test for him after he comes into the world is this, that Allah will send ahkams, orders upon them. Via Allah, via his his final prophet, the seal of the prophets, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. It's the final prophet. Allah subhanahu wa taala gave him the Quran and the Sharia. Allah will give this to him and the Holy Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam with Allah's hukum. He will deliver the hukum, the order of Sharia, to the people. So our duty is that order of Sharia. We need to bring it into reality. That's it. That's our test for passing and failing. That's the first lesson for us. To learn and to pass away. So the malaika was stood and the jinnat was stood. That your success is in this. If you do this, you're successful. If you don't, then you will fail. Subhanallah. Nobody can uh, question or challenge. He's greater, we were greater, that was a greater. No, the first lesson is this. That whatever order I give, you need to bring that into reality. And this is called deen. Deen. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala clearly in the Qur'an gave this message. This is the whole deen. وَمَا أَتَاكُمْ رَسُولُ That whatever 
your Rasul, your Prophet, my Habib sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, whatever he takes from me, gives to you, whatever he gives to you, it's from me, Allah says, from me. وَمَيَّتُ الرَّسُولَ فَقَدْ أَطَاعَ اللَّهُ that Allah's Rasul his obedience, if you follow him and obey him, it's as if you have obeyed Allah. Remember this. Remember this order of mine. And when my Rasul gives you an instruction order, whether you understand or you don't, whether your environment accepts it or not, whether your society accepts it or not, whether they're capable or not, that wherever you are in the world, Islamic or non-Islamic country, wherever you are residing, wherever you are present, Wherever my Nabi's hukum comes to you, then it's lazim that you implement the order. No excuse can be presented. This is the first lesson being given to the universe, the people of the universe. Subhanallah. وَإِذْ قُلْنَا لِلْمَلَائِكَةِ اسْجُدُوا لِآدَمَ فَسَجَدُوا إِلَّا إِبْلِيسِ The first order, the first order that was being given. That Allah says, this event Allah is repeating in 11 Jews, Allah Ta'ala mentions Hazrat Adam alayhi salam's event from 30 Jews in 11 of them this event is mentioned and repeated here we will see uh, we live in this generation in this era the biggest fitna is what? is what? it is this it is this lesson that we are learning today that lot of deen is spread all four directions deen, masjid, speeches I always say this to you why? because alhamdulillah we are uh, strengthening our knowledge and deen, Allah's, Allah's shukr, we are grateful, Allah has given us tawfiq to, to pray and to sit and read the Qur'an and understand. It's a great way of passing the time. Very fortunate people are they who are sat at this moment in time with the Qur'an, subhanAllah. And listen and they do amal on this inshallah as well. That the first sabaq, the first lesson the Qur'an that gives to us, is that whatever Allah gives? وَإِذْ قُلْنَا لِلْمَلَائِكَةِ اسْجُدُوا لِآدَمُ فَسَجَدُوا إِلَّا إِبْلِيسِ سُبْحَانَ اللَّهِ That I've ordered, I instructed, I didn't see what you're made of, who is greater, who's superior, who's got more, who's got less, nothing. It's my order. Allah says it was soil, clay, he was made of that, whatever he's made of. But I've ordered you, you have to prostrate to him. Whoever prostrates to him is successful, whoever doesn't is not successful. I've announced until Qiyamah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala orders that that my Habib, وسلم, whatever shari he comes with, whatever principles he brings, law he brings, that until the end of time, until Qiyamah, that law will continue and nothing change. And this will be the final sharia, the final law. Apart from this, there'll be no other way. Isa alayhi salam will come and he will also submit to this sharia, to this law. Remember this. And, and what is the essence of this? Whatever my Nabi gives you or states to you, explains to you, call it Sharia, Sunnah, whatever you want to call it. However he gives it to you, where is it going to be coming from? وَمَن يُطِيرُ الرَّسُولُ فَقَدْ أَطَعَ اللَّهِ That it will come from me, from me. So if you don't listen to my Nabi, then you are disobeying me. And if you obey your Nabi then you obey me. Make this lesson firm. Learn this lesson, don't forget it. This is the sign of pass and fail, Allah is mentioning. And this is our biggest challenge and test today, my brothers, our biggest ta- challenge and test. And in this test, we have failed today, we have failed. Our life, all decisions, deen, world, akhirah, hereafter, everything is based on our nafs and our desires, my brothers. Let's pay attention to this. We have got the deen, the deen is with us, but we will take that part of the deen that we like and what we dis- dislike, we will leave. That's our principle, we say to Allah, Allah, what we like, prefer, we'll keep, what we don't like, we will leave that. Uh, according to our environment and society, we'll practice, it doesn't suit us in this country to practice, our daughters are young, and it's not right that they do this and that. We don't like for them to go out like this and that. We can't do anything here. We'll just do, okay, yes, we're Muslims, we recite the kalama, we celebrate Eid, we pray Salah sometimes, and from and we can't take immodest things out of our homes, because how shall we bring enjoyment and uh, uh, for our children, entertainment for our children? When Allah Ta'ala made this universe, everyone knew in the universe that all these things that Allah Ta'ala has created in the world, it's for our test. Allah Ta'ala, if He wanted, He wouldn't give us the mind or brain for us to innovate and uh, invent these things. 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, from a tree He can give us thousands of different species of apples, 150, 200, more than that, different uh, types of dates from one tree, every date's taste is different. So can Allah Ta'ala not do this? That Allah Ta'ala could conclude all of this and make our minds um, numb to the fact that everything's around us and we want to know? No. But Allah Ta'ala has opened everything around us. Allah Ta'ala, why did He submit nur in front of the clay? Why did Allah Ta'ala make the fire submit in front of the clay, the soil? Allah Ta'ala wanted to see though, who is obeying my hukum? Who is obeying my order? So in the first order in prostration, Allah said, whatever happens... Whatever occurs, it should be what my Nabi has brought. Subhanallah. Allah Ta'ala says, Subhanallah. In another part of the Quran, Allah Ta'ala says, Whoever opposes my Rasul, whoever opposes my Rasul, when clearly he's given a message to you, he's telling that don't do this action, leave this action, don't wander around without parda, don't be immodest, don't do wrong actions. Whatever individual opposes this, وَمَيْ شَاقَهُ رَسُولُهُ After he's been advised clearly, blatantly, this is an event, clearly I've given you the Qur'an, the Sharia, the, the principles, and you know what is right and wrong. And that person who leaves this path, <clears throat> who shuns this path, then remember what will happen. That those people who leave my path, Allah says, those people who leave the path of Iman, belief, those who leave the path of Allah and His Rasul, Allah Ta'ala says, then they will enter into Jahannam, hellfire. This is what will occur to them. Jahannam will be their abode. That will be the worst of places for them. And what is the punishment being given for? For which purpose? For which reason? That whatever my Rasul brings my hukam, you cannot oppose that order. The initiation of the deen and the world was from this point. The most important part of deen, Allah Ta'ala says, whatever akams come to us, orders come to us, and there will be difficulty. This is the test. And with those difficulties and problems, with along with them, what will we do? That person who has uh, implemented Allah's orders according to Rasulullah Sunnah Sharia, Allah Ta'ala announces there's no greater success than this. And there's no worse consequence than this, that if we don't do the Jannum Musa'at Masira, the worst place will be that he'll find those who, who implement Allah's order and the Prophet's order, then that will be the best of results and best of rewards. What a great point Allah is telling us in the Quran. Now we can look at our homes, in our homes, outside, sisters, brothers, aunties, uncles, cha-cha, cha-chi, everyone. We are living lives like donkeys and dogs. Yes, why it is haram and halal, we are determining it via our nafs, our desires. Yes, that if you go out on conferences and marches, etc., all of the, 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 the wrong things that are being done in the homes in the name of Deen, Ashik, Rasul, we say we're lovers of the Prophet, and we have gatherings, nads, nasheeds, and studies, circles, and social gatherings, and this gathering and that gathering. Women get together and talk and talk. They don't know about Deen, nothing at all, no amal, no practice. According to Sharia, we don't know how should we live at home, our children, how should they live, how should we eat, how should we um, celebrate marriages, how to run our business. We don't even how to pray five times salah in the masjid. Our husband, our children, we become old and your children, they become old at that home. And we just tell them go and work and go to the shop, sit in this uh, factory and do this and that. That's what we teach them. And their deen dar, they say we're following the deen. The deen, which deen? Which is the deen that they like, what they call the deen. And Allah's order is this, وَمَعْتَاكُمْ Rasula. You have to do every action that Rasulullah has given to you, and no other action apart from that. Do what Allah Ta'ala has given to you. So this is clear, isn't it, brothers? Clear. Now, the next point, this verse that it is telling us, this point.
illa iblis aba when allah ordered the angels then allah explains that who rejected or did not accept who did not implement the order iblis so he was from the jinnat and with regards to iblis satan the devil he was from amongst the jinn but all he was from amongst the jinnat but he was born uh, amongst the angels and most of the his life he spent amongst the angels and in the tafsir is stated that when the jinn were populated uh, they populated the earth they made a lot of noise they did lots of wrong things and they started to kill and uh, hit each other and fight and and spread impure things in the earth when they started these actions then allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, with regards to iblis he was the big jinn and Allah Ta'ala, with the angels, Allah made him the leader because he was very capable amongst the angels as well. And um, Shaitan, Satan, Iblis, he was uh, on a high level. And Allah Ta'ala made him the leader, Allah's Khabir and Basir, Allah knows what he's going to do. Allah sent him that you uh, teach them the Jinnat, explain to them. So he went and he uh, quarreled with the Jinnat. He fought with the Jannat, he hid them, and he expelled them to the jungles, into the oceans, into the seas, and he uh, he came back successful, and he was given congratulations. So he also had this feeling that I have achieved big things. So when he saw, now what's this situation? That Allah has ordered, that prostrate, Allah has ordered. Allah, it doesn't matter how big a man is, doesn't matter how big a man is, listen to this point. Yes, that he became the, you could say, high level in Malaika. They understood the order, but he didn't understand because his nafs was very big and fat. And it, had, it expanded, ballooned out. He'd become the chief, the Chaudhary, you could say, for everybody. In other words, he was so much that all qualities were present in him. He was an Abi, the worshipper, an Alim, he was a scholar, he worshipped, he was a Zahid, he was a Setek, he was such a big scholar that he used to teach the angels. The angels accepted him as their leader, subhanAllah. And although he was a jinn. So this is the status al game. Look how Allah Ta'ala selected. And all of this that was happening, this was for our lesson, our sabaq, alhamdulillah. This was all for, for our learnings and teaching that how Allah Ta'ala delivered this learning to us. Subhanallah. So when he saw this, he said, what's going on here? So what did he do? He said, oh, this is difficult. This is good. And then he pre- started to present his excuses uh, going against Allah, presenting his opposition in front of Allah. So let's listen here carefully. We need to think about this a little bit. Yes? So how can this happen? Why do we have to do this? We can't practice this here. Our daughter shouldn't do this either. We can't practice this either. This is too strict. In different ways and styles, people oppose Allah's laws. Yes? So compare here to Satan. Look how we reject the deen when we reject Allah Ta'ala gave the example at that time that don't do this, whoever has done this, remember this. So the other point Allah Ta'ala showed here, now, what did he do? Iblis illa Iblis aba wastakbar. Yes, so he said, uh, I cannot do this. He is made of clay soil and I am this and I am that. I've done this, I've done that. How can I prostrate? And he rejected. He refused. Now here a question arises. A question that a high status worshipper, Alim, he was a muhaddith, abid, a zahid, a mufti. All of this was shaitan. All these uh, capabilities were present within him. Yeah. So, if he's an alim, a mufti, a muhaddith, a qari, and such a big personality, shaitan was, uh, Satan, can he reject Allah like this? Allahu Akbar. Allah Ta'ala is explaining this point. Yes, a person like that can reject Allah. How? Why? Because all the ibadat he performed, the worship, 
shaytan, all his worship, his ilm, his knowledge, he was an abid, a zahid, Allah is khabir and basir. Allah knows, all knowing, all seeing, hearing. And he didn't do these things for Allah's rada, Allah's pleasure. He didn't do these things out of Allah's love for Allah's love. Listen clearly. Be an abid, alim, zahid, mufti, this and that. This is not the proof of elevated rank. Shaitan did this as well. Yes. So why was he expelled? Shaitan. Why was he rejected? Why did he become wretched and cursed? Reason being that all his ibadat were not for the pleasure of Allah. Rather behind that was a greed. And the greed he had was that he was saying all of these things for this reason, that he wanted khilafat on the earth. He was saying, Allah, when he sees me, he'll give me the khilafat, the leadership of the world, and I'll be a chodri. He knew the earth was being made and it's got to be given to somebody. Yes, it wasn't in his mind at all that the man will be made of clay and he will become the khalif of the earth. Say, subhanallah, subhanallah, what a... Beautiful point. So shaitan had this misconception, he had this desire, want, greed to become the leader of the earth. And that's why he's worshipping. So here's the lesson that Allah to us in this verse. Allah has given us this lesson. That analyze yourselves, measure yourselves, the ibadah you're doing, you become in an alim or a qari or a scholar or a hafid. Is this for Allah Ta'ala's rada? Are you doing it for Allah's pleasure? Or is behind this the greed of the world, earning money, earning wealth, becoming respectful, becoming dignitary, honorary, people running after you, and so many other things we see in the world. So many ways of trying to achieve things in the world. There's no limit to homes. And everywhere you go, we see this behavior. This is how clearly Allah has explained this to us. That because all is ibadat, ilam, abid, zahid, sujood, prostration, he didn't do any of this for Allah's sake, and behind all of this was greed. He was greedy, he said, I want all of these things Allah will give to me. I am capable of this, he thought. And when it was rejected that you won't get these things, oh, he felt very bad. He said, is that the case? Then I'll leave all of this, he said, I'll leave. The worshipping, Allahu Akbar. He rejected, tell me. So what we realize, the lesson we get from here, brothers, is that the ibadah, the worship, that sujood, that ruku, that ilm, that Qur'an, that kirat, doesn't matter how big we become in dunya, can praise us just like the angels praise shay- shaitan. Angels would stand with him, be with him. They were uh, his, his devotees, you could say, his followers, tell me. But what was his real face? His real face is that behind all of his worship and effort was a, an objective. So whenever you do any work of the deen, any good deed, its link and connection should be for the sake of just one thing. The remember Allah says, I'm giving this lesson, you're going to the earth. That if you do deeds for my sake, Allah says, if you do a good deed, and Allah gives you the tawfiq to good deed, then be careful what should be khalis, purely, purely for the sake of Allah. In there, there should be no desire and want of the world, dunya. Objective should be to earn deen, not dunya. Allah says, definitely, definitely, that you can utilize the means, the wasila, whatever comes to you, you can use the resources Allah has given to you. And whatever worship there is you do in the world, if Quran should be read for Allah Ta'ala's sake. Masjid, go there, everything regards to the masjid for Allah's sake. Yes, if you love your children for the sake of Allah. If you love your wife for the sake of Allah. If you love your shaykh for the sake of Allah. Everything you do, whatever resources take you to Allah, whichever means take you to Allah, everything should be used and implemented for the sake of Allah. And if Allah is not in anything, so if you don't do anything for the sake of Allah, any one action, then the consequence will be just like how Allah Ta'ala said, I expelled shaitan. What a big message, message Allah has given. Allah says, beware, you shouldn't be two-faced with me. When you prostrate, prostrate to me. When you ruku, it's for me. Allahu Akbar. Do tasbih, it's for my name. There shouldn't be greed behind there. I'll do dhikr, tasbih, I'll get khilafa, be a representative, and then I'll do this and that and take advantage. No, when you take the hand of a shaykh, you say, Allah, I have taken the wasila, the means to get to you, and I'm loving your, the, uh, your, my shaykh so that I can attain your love via this. Because Allah said this clearly. Allah said himself. 
that do a deed to gain my love, take hold of my friend for my love. But it should be for my love, Allah Ta'ala says. He is not the objective, He is the resource, He is the means for you. Who is the objective? Allah. Allah is the Rabb. We have to please Allah. That's our objective. So definitely love a person. Definitely sit in his company. So Allah says that He is the means to me. But don't Allah says that you are doing, don't think you're doing for someone else. Because otherwise you'll be the mistake that shaitan made so much knowledge, so much status. Just by having all of this. Where did he arrive to? Aba was taqbara wa kana minal. Allah mentions clearly. Yes, he, he lost it all within seconds. Everything was exposed. He said, no, no, I can't do this. What a big action of rejection. Imagine that when ibadah like this is done, and this is a very important point, when ibadah like this is done, when a good deed is done like this, behind which there is objective of the dunya, to earn money, to earn dunya, to earn status or fame, recognition, whatever is your near, if it's not for Allah's sake, then remember that action. If anything is not done for Allah's sake, then behind that ibadah, a disease, a sickness is created. Allah Ta'ala creates that. Behind that deed, Allah Ta'ala creates a disease, an illness, a sickness. And that sickness, Allah Akbar, is such a vast sickness, is such a vast disease, that the first sin, remember, as soon as a person comes into maturity, Allah Ta'ala shows this, because he had this feeling that he had a reason for his ibadah. So Allah Ta'ala exposed him, that I put such a sickness inside him, I put such a sickness inside him, due to which he was destroyed, Allah gave him this punishment. So when any person, when any person, whatever sadqat or good deed, whatever he does, if his objective is not Allah's nearness, rather it's the dunya, the world, and being recognized, then he'll get the same sickness about which... Hazrat Qatada Rahmatullah states that the first sin, the first sin in the universe, and that will be, will come about kibar, takabur, pride, and that's the biggest form of shirk you can uh, take and understand. Why? Why is its punishment big? Anyone who's got even a mustard seed of, of, of pride within him, yes, mustard seed, a speck of dust equivalent to pry, then he will not be able to even feel the, the wind of Jannah paradise, will not even come next to him or touch him. He will not be able to go into in Jannah. Because this is the quality of shaitan. To do kibar is the quality of shaitan. And always remember this today, you will see that you will get kibar, that more people who do ibadah, the scholars, the faqis, the jurists, the muhadith, all kibar and pride you will see amongst them. Why? Because the reason for kibar is that they are doing this for the sake of the dunya, not for akhirah. So Allah Ta'ala instills kibar into that. Because in the world Allah Ta'ala has decided, due to the barakah Allah has announced in the world that you'll forget, you're not interested, rather what will be your hashar, your consequence. Allah says, and I've shown this, I've demonstrated this before, Abid, alim, hafid, everything he was, the shaitan. Allah says, Aba was takbara, wa kana min al kafirin. Allah says, that they fell prostrate all save Iblis, that he rejected through pride and became his consequence. Allah says, the consequence of his actions, subhanAllah said, then this is the consequence of rejecting. Allahu Akbar. That when a person, this is stated now here, it's stated to shaitan when it was told to him, and that he was then included amongst the wretched, the cursed people, the people who d- disbelieve, no, because he didn't do sajda. No, 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 no. But sajda here was wajib, and to reject wajib is no kufr. Subhanallah, listen to the point. Listen to the point. To reject the, to reject the wajib does not lead to kufr. Yes, to leave wajib. So why was he given such a big punishment? It wasn't based on rejecting wajib, it was on based on rejecting the order of Allah. So not looking at the fact that it was a sajda, rather he presented excuses, he rejected Allah's instruction, and that's why he was given punishment, and this is pride. So pride definition is when Allah's orders are given, and in front of us he makes excuses, no, 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 I can't do that in this country, how can this be, it's too hard, and this is opposition and challenging, and this is what shaitan did. Upon this rejection, 
he was given the biggest punishment of all, so kibr and pride and haughtiness. Then when Allah's laws are coming and the servant doesn't accept the ahkam, the order, he says it's not necessary, it's not necessary to keep the beard. In this day and age, the whole society we see, oh no, no, we don't need to do this. If we don't have pictures, then how can we survive? We'll have to make pictures, pictures should be allowed, etc. In other words, anything you see that lots of, lots of good uh, news and glad tidings have been told to us about Sharia. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said that the Prophet ﷺ said that I was sent to this world so I can eliminate the musical instruments and music. And today there are uh, excuses that this is artistry, there's no place where music, this action is not played out. Makkah, Medina, go anywhere in the world. What a big fitna, and this is the day and age of fitna. And the Quran is telling us, what's the punishment for this? Allah says that with regards to any of my orders, such big ahkams of Allah instructions, whoever does not listen and rejects for him is stated, Allah Ta'ala stated, that he will be the offspring of shaitan from the group of shaitan. And where we will take shaitan in the same way, because he's done kibr, and this is aba, rejection. Yes, have we not heard the hadith? We've heard this before. And same hadith we are repeating, in which Allah's Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam stated about his sunnah. In regards to his sunnah, Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, All people will go into paradise. All people will go into paradise except, except he who refuses. He, except who, what is refusal of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? What's the meaning of aba? The person who's refused cannot go into paradise. So what is aba? That person who has opposed my sunnah and not agreed to following my sunnah and has committed an act of pride. This refers to him. All people going to paradise illa aba except those who refused. So that aba is coming here in the Quran. Allah is clearly telling us. Same word. Now, so both sides here. Allah's Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, His Sunnah, to not accept it to Abba, and to reject Allah's order, Abba. Because both are the same. Sunnah, Sharia, Quran, are all one thing. All one thing. So to reject both, the consequences is what the Quran is telling us. The Quran has clearly said the reason for this is because that person has got kibar and pride and haughtiness in the first, the person with kibar. Not kibar is that, for example, I am wealthy and say he's mutakabir, or I am rich, or I am, you say he's well, um, proud, etc. The biggest mutakabir in the universe, first and foremost, was shaitan. Why was he mutakabir? Because he used to reject following Allah's orders. So the biggest mutakabir at this moment in time today is who? Is that person who, with regards to sharia and Allah's orders, does not accept them. Subhanallah. He doesn't accept them, doesn't implement them, doesn't follow them. He is the biggest mutakabir, the worst mutakabir. And the biggest mutakabir will be with that person in this universe who is the wretched mutakabir. Allah says, that's why Allah says, وَكَانُ مِنَ الْكَافِرِينَ وَكَانَ مِنَ الْكَافِرِينَ Allah Akbar. And this is the order that will be given. So this is the consequences, the severity and the punishment. So great message of the Qur'an to us. And may Allah protect us. And allow us to implement these words. This is the day and age of fitna. Such tribulations and trials and tests for the sake of Allah. Nothing will benefit us. The Quran is open in front of you. I'm reading it. I'm not telling you Lughar, Arabic grammar, etc. Simple, straightforward uh, Quran along with the hadith. And the result of this is what? That in every way, all the time we have to accept Allah's order. Whatever Allah, whenever Allah, Allah's orders are established, it doesn't matter what we feel, we have to implement them, accept them. And the next point, whatever ibadah is done, whatever good deed is done, whichever good deed is done. That for example, even if you do a deed where you give somebody water to drink, if you want the reward for this, if you did it for Allah's sake, then the doors of paradise will open. If you had some greed behind it, I'll give him water, he'll become a friend, he'll do me a favor, or I'll feed him some food and then I'll get benefit from him. Yes, or I'll serve my shaykh and then my shaykh will give me khilafa. So we are asking for dunya from your shaykh. If you ask for akhirah, then that's the best thing. Don't ask for dunya. Yes, so if I serve this shaykh, then subhanallah, I will get his qurb and name is subhanallah's qurb. This is the intention, this is lilayat. Because we have to travel to Allah. So if you serve my shaykh, and then I will get the fragrance of Allah Ta'ala's remembrance. 
and I will get close to Allah. So what if we do if we do khidmah ya shaykh, serving the shaykh, we'll get Allah. You see this, don't we? So if we give water to somebody, we'll get Allah's nearness. If we give this person water, then at least, uh, for example, we think today I'll get five pounds from him. If I serve my shaykh, then maybe people start to respect me and they'll start running after me and I'll this and that. No, if you want to love your shaykh, there's only one reason you should love your shaykh, so that Allah is happy, the shaykh is happy, and you'll be successful because the shaykh is the wasila, the means that I will love my shaykh and serve him so that my Rabb becomes happy with me. Allah Ta'ala has told us this automatically himself. This is Allah's order. Whichever order I give to you, oh no, no, how can this be? Uh, serve the shaykh, same points from shaitan. Because Allah Ta'ala has said, Allah says, Fajr is in the morning, it's in the morning. If Allah says, Fajr is in the evening, then it will be in the evening. If Allah says, 30 days fast, then fast 30 days. If Allah says, not 30 days fast, then 30 days fast. Subhanallah. If Allah says, go on a suffer on the journey, then instead of four, pray two, we say, no, no, I want to pray four, that will become the same. Adab. Allah's, uh, Allah's decision, we go against it. So Allah says, I'm ordering you to do two. Normally we complain when there's more. So why are we complaining now? So Allah's ahkam, laws, principles, whenever they come, we become self us. We don't say, why is this? Is this for me? Is this for them? Let's leave this. And uh, subhanAllah, if Allah says, run, we have to start running. If Allah says, in Arafah, sit down. Suddenly we'll sit. If Allah says, throw the stones, then do it. There's no logic in any of the actions. There's no logic that we can see physically, outwardly. But there's so much enjoyment. Because this is the ilahi, the order of Allah. Allah gave the order, subhanAllah, that uh, sacrifice your son. Does they, they, do you understand this order? The son, the son of Hazrat Ibrahim alayhi salam, one son who Ibrahim alayhi salam loved him so much. Was he done wrong? I said that take him and slaughter him, slaughter him. The order was being given to the father. Can anybody imagine this to do this himself? Why? Because this was the practice that was being given. First judo, Allah Akbar. The same lesson, the same learning. Wa idhkula lil malaika. This judo, li adam fasjadu illa iblisa. Allah says that when I instructed them to prostrate the angels, to prostrate to clay. The, then he went, he lost it. So what did I say to Ibrahim? Al-Islam, the sacrifice your son. Sacrifice your son. Uh, Allah sacrificed like normal, totally like normal. It wasn't logical maybe, but he said, hukum ilahi. And the son is saying beforehand, the Abba, no need to worry. If this is Allah's order, then totally fine. And then he's leaving his wife in the jungle, in the forest, young child. And a, a, a wild jungle that we see, the Baytullah is present there now. It was a wild, wild uh, plain and you can hear animals and mountain darkness. And he's leaving his family. Is there any logic? No. But what's the reason? It's Allah's order, Allah's hukam, subhanAllah. He left. And the wife looked at her, subhanAllah. She said, okay, listen, tell me you're leaving us. What's our fault? What we've done wrong? You are leaving us on our own. SubhanAllah. Just one point, tell me please. The wife asked the question. She called out. Tell me one point that are you leaving us out of punishing us or are you leaving for some other reason or is this the order of Allah? He said, it's Allah's order. She said, Hasbunallahu wa ni'mal wakil, ni'mal mawla wa ni'mal nasir. Plus you can go now, leave it to me in this jungle with my son and I'll know and my Rabb will know best and this is implementing Allah's order. And here we are spread out for four taka. For, for pence. For, for pence, four pounds, we split and we leave them. We, we, we don't even know how to earn halal or what is haram. May Allah Ta'ala give us all the tawfiq, my brothers. Dunya is a big deception. If I was to clo- close now, what answer will we give? Tell me. So Allah's order, instruction, we have to accept all the time. And number two, do khalisi ba'd and the third point, Allah Akbar, that don't uh, look at others. He's an alim, a muhaddith, he's a faqi, a jurist, he does ibadah, he worships, and he has reached the height, he does hajj and umrah. Don't be put off by this. Don't be impressed by this. Allah is telling us in the Quran, don't be impressed by this. Why? Because shaitan did the same. Shaitan did the same. And if you want to be impressed, then be impressed and influenced by one thing. Subhanallah, Imam Razi, rahmatullah, I'll present his statement. He stated, That don't be impressed by these things. As a flesh bin Saab, Imam Shafi Rahmatullah, he I'm telling you the narration. They said that if you see somebody walking on water or floating in the air 
Or you see he's got the wings of ibadah and people gathering, his conference, masses behind him, his ilm being spoken about. Never be impressed by this because shaitan has already done this. And if you want to see, determine the reward through one action, if you see somebody superior and great, how do you differentiate? Then as said, uh, Imam Shafi, Rahmatullah Lay, all have narrated this, listen clearly, they look at one thing, not ilm or hadith or fiqh or marches or conferences or khatam of Bukhari, look at one thing and recognize it through one thing, that thing that Allah Ta'ala at that time proved to the people, what was that? Shaitan was there, everything was there, but he didn't have one thing, subhanallah, that he wasn't punctual and he wasn't observant of Allah Sharia, he hadn't accepted it. So Allah says that people like this in the world, even if they're floating in the dunya in the air, but if their amal, their deeds, if they are not according to the Quran and the Hadith, then just tell them, Allahu Akbar. وَكَانَ Allah Akbar Allah says that there can be no bigger punishment. وَكَانَ مِنَ الْكَافِرِينَ Doesn't matter if a person is flying the air, uh, on the air or walking on water, being, give you big references of, of walis of Allah and imams, and he was a muhaddith and alim, he said, don't trust these things. Because, subhanAllah, he is a, a pious, and the, the, just the angels when they prostrated, Adam Allah, Allah says that look, his actions, his statements, his words are according to Quran and Hadith, that's good. And these things you will see no defect, no ilam, no ibadah, nothing can you see by his actions are present, subhanallah. So accept that this person, he is the pious servant of Allah. May Allah Ta'ala give us all the tawfiq, inshallah if life continues, remains, then I will meet you again tomorrow. Wa akhru da'wana, alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.